Okay, the first thing that you're gonna have to do is find a way to get chopsticks and they're very hard to come by. They're not easy to find and you might have to fight an Asian person to get some and that's not recommended because they have these martial arts skills. Um, so another way, an easier way is you could probably win their favor if you buy some of their signature dishes. So we're gonna try that right now and see if we can come across some of these chopsticks. Can I get the uh, salmon roll and the Philly roll? Extra wasabi and extra ginger. And that's it. Thank you. Success. You might not know, but I speak fluent Asian and what this says, congratulations, you have won the right to the honorable chopsticks. Success. I like to put extra wasabi. On my Asian food because it 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 uh adds great power to the warrior. And so few can withstand its power, but I've built up an endurance. You put a little ginger on top, like a ginger hat, because that makes that's how the Asians do it. And if you know better, that's what you do. It's called a ginger hat on top of your wasabi. Mm. The power of the chopsticks. Mm. Over the back. I'll be back. I can never seem to break these right in the middle. They always seem to splinter off in one direction or the other. So you could take a, a kitchen knife and you know cut it a little bit to try to get it right in the middle. Um, but I recommend instead that you spend hundreds of dollars just for this one project and buy yourself a very strong industrial power saw and uh, just cut them right in half, right in half that way. You can really use anything to stain these. You can water down paint, spray paint, uh, wood stain. We're going to use a little bit of everything. So I think we're going to make these. Maybe orange. Let's see. It's a nice wood stain an old sock you put plastic over your hand and then you put your hand in the sock and then you're good to go you can stain anything okay so I settled on a dark wood stain and then a deep red with the spray paint and then a fade from a green to yellow with the other one. Let's let these dry for about an hour and a half and we will continue. Okay, this is very simple and fun. You take your chopstick. Now if you're gonna make a hairpin, then about two thirds of the way down, start wrapping. Actually, I would start like section off the part that you want to have the, the um, wire and then start in the middle. I can try about two feet, maybe three feet. And this is going to be um, 16, 18, or 20. That's what I do, 16, 18, or 20. I wouldn't go any further, thicker, or thinner than that. And uh, start in the middle of the wire, and the middle of the wire and the middle of where you want the wire to be, and just start wrapping it around and around tight. And you can have both ends start wrapping around and around and around and around and around. Just coil it tight. These coils don't have to touch, they can. It's better if they do, probably, it makes it tighter. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna come big diagonals around, like this. And then you're gonna finish it off with a curly cue, and you're gonna press that curly cue tight against it. 
Now the other end of the wire, um, you can cross over the other way, big diagonals, and then end your cur that curly cue right there. And you can make a nice big one on the end because you know you want it to be kind of cute. That's a really simple pattern. That's just one way. Um, you could do all kinds of different whatever you want. I would just start out. Well, obviously I made that fat or ignore that. But I would I would start out in the middle of the wire and in the middle of the section you want to use again. And I would get your coil down. Get your coil all the way to the end till you have the wire sticking out like that. What you want to do next with these two ends is up to you after that. You could do anything you want. All I'd say is make sure there's no sharp end. At the end you can tuck it in somewhere or the easiest is just end it with a coil and then flatten the coil against it. But you can do you can do all kinds of crazy patterns. You can build up the bulk and make it like this. Really fun and crazy. And that's that'll make a cute hairpin. Now if you don't want hairpin, the other half of this video is do the same exact thing to make a really funky, cool bead. And I saw this on someone else's video. It was, it's like just total insanity. For that case, I would start at the thinner end of the chopstick because you want it to be able to slide off. And if it gets thicker this way, you don't want to make your bead and then have it get stuck. So in that case, you're wrapping it the same exact way and you're doing all the same stuff and you're making your everything the same, but you're sliding it off when you're done. So you'll have this barrel bead that has a nice hole going through it. And it's a unique bead made only by you, one of a kind. And then you can take a bunch of these barrel beads, bigger and smaller, however you like, and you can make yourself a super original fun necklace or bracelet or even earrings or anything, you know? Don't make it too heavy if they're earrings. Keep in mind, earlobes are sensitive, but super fun, right? I don't know, hang a little thing on the end like that. It's up to you. So you pretty much figure it out from the design. I don't need to do it now, but it's fun to watch. So let's do it. Oh, also my fingers, uh, all this red is not because I got the paint on myself while I was trying to paint the, ch the chopsticks. This was actually because a leopard came into my house and tried to attack me in the middle of this project. And I fought him off. This is not my blood, it's his. So, you know, I had the power of the Asian chopsticks flowing through me and that's why I was able to fight him off. Do not try this at home. If a leopard gets in your house, please just call leopard control and let them handle it. Maybe lock yourself in the closet until they arrive. That's my uh, public announcement for um, keep you guys safe. All right, let's get into this. This is 18 gauge, in case you guys are still learning your numbers. And um, let's get about, I don't know. Let's take, let's take two feet. That should be fun. I'm pretending I've actually done this before. All right, uh, I want to wrap it right around this section, so I'm going to come right into the middle of that section and the middle of my wire, and I'm just going to start coiling it around tight. This is the part where I'm going to bump the camera a lot. Really don't try to be perfect with this, just have fun, just go around it like as fast as you can. Sometimes you can just go fast and then push the coils together. Actually, no, that's not working. This is actually hugging the wood pretty tight. So... While we're coiling this, I want to talk to you guys about investing in gold and, and, uh, and your real estate funnel that you can use. It's one of my other side businesses. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, you don't understand how hard this is. It's, it's reaching out and smacking the camera every time I come around. Oh, there we go. Now we got a rhythm. The rhythm is going to get you. That's what this woman once told me in the 80s on the radio. Okay. Now look, I don't have much room here. That one did not work out good. But you know what? This is just fun, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to stop right here for a second. I'm going to take this one, come around like this. Um, 
And that's about good, so let's coil it. Who, who took my pliers? Okay, I'm just gonna take this and coil it. This is a pathetically boring little tiny coil, but it's cute enough. And watch this one is gonna come around. And oh look, I thought I thought it would come the opposite way. I thought they would crisscross, but they're actually going the same diagonal. That's awesome. I'm learning as I go. So I'm gonna make this a little more bam, right over top of there. Now that that coil's not gonna move. And Hmm. I could just end it with a gigantic coil, but that coil is going to be a little bit loose. This is 18 gauge. Uh, I think I'm going to coil it from the middle so I can tuck that piece in. So I'm going to grab it like this. So how will I do that? Yeah, I'll figure that out next time. This time let's just make a gigantic coil. Let's make it fun. It's a hairpin. Nobody's going to be like using it in a bar fight, so I, I don't need to worry about it being the most strong thing in the entire world. Everything I can do with my fingers, I do with my fingers. The pliers are when you're starting out. After a while, you, you get to the point where you can do almost everything without the pliers. Okay. So, here's this guy on the end. And as much as I said what I said, I don't like. There we go. Now he's a little more secure. I'm gonna actually force him around. There we go. That's pretty cute. So I can make a cute hairpin. Let's do another one with the other one, see if we can get more fancy. I'm gonna say take three feet of wire. This uh, two feet was not nearly enough. Okay, I coiled this one super loose because I realized it's grabbing the wood. I'm not gonna slide it off as a bead. Otherwise, I would say make the coils tighter. So I'm just gonna have super fun with this one. I'm just gonna go wild. So I'm, I'm gonna cross these and do that swirl I do where it's like two people linking arms and then they just go around and around each other. Because this is just going to be fun. I'm just going to do all the things. So I'm just going around and around and around and around. I mean, it is super fat. This is going to be like the fattest fatty swirl you've ever seen. This swirl does not believe in the low carb diet. Sometimes you can just bring these together and coil them at the same time like that. Okay, I'm happy with that fat swirl. All right, I'm just come around with these two. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my loop-de-loop -loop stuff. Ha <laughs> ha, loop-de-loop. Loop-de-loop. Oh yeah, I'm feeling this. I do this on a lot of videos. I just hold the two strands together. I keep them side by side by applying tons of pressure. And I just make a loop going one way, and then the other way, and then one way, and then the other way, back and forth. And it, you can get it out pretty, pretty out into the atmosphere, like way out there, like it looks super unstable. And then you just bring it back around and secure it. So look at this craziness. Oh, this is, this is getting more fun. I didn't think this video was going to be this fun. Let's do one more, and then we'll bring it in. It's like a fisherman. You throw out your line and then you're like, reel it in. What are we gonna do with this now? Haha, <laughs> let's wrap it around like this. Let's make this a 3D insanity. Whoa, I don't like that. It's a good idea in my head. I'm pulling it back out. Let's bring it, this is my original plan. Let's bring it around like this. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that. That is pretty. Let's come around here. How tight do we want it secured? That's pretty tight. That's good. All right, we're secured now. See that? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Come back around here. Now we have just enough wire left to put some little fancy thingies right here. And look, this, this uh, spiral is pretty secure. So this one is the easiest because it's pretty much nothing left we can do but make a baby sw spiral. It's funny, I have i didn't even know how this is gonna turn out. I just knew it was gonna look kinda cool, but 
This is super fun. That could be another fat swirl. Let's go around one more time and make it a fat swirl. Let's grab it right there. There we go, guys. Super cute. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's do some more. This is a pattern I think is gonna work for you guys. So I'm gonna do this again so you can watch it again. Simple loose coil just to get it to grab the wood. And then come from the top and the bottom like this. Cross over like this. See that? And then just keep coming around with both like that. And just put, keep pressing this to keep the wires from jumping over top of each other so they stay flat. But then just go round and round and round. Round and round and round and round. Sorry, I'm jumping out of the camera because this wire is like attacking the camera. But you know, take it from there and just keep going around as big as you want it. And now you just, you just swirl out, do fancy stuff and then come back and anchor it. Swirl out and do fancy stuff, come back and anchor it. So you run out of wire. When you run out of wire, close it off with two loops and that's it. So it's just gonna go row. I'm gonna be even more wild on this one. I'm gonna come all the way out like this. Come around here. Come. Let's see, what do, what do we wanna do? What's really wild and crazy? Let's do this, let's do this crazy fat loops. Let's make this one like super crazy. Oh, oh, we're pushing the limits here. So somebody stop us. We're out of control. These loops are fun too, because you can play with them, make them looser, tighter as you're making them. Haha, <laughs> look at that. What do we do with it? I don't even know. I don't even know what I want to do with it. So I think I'll fold it over this way. I have no idea. Ooh, I know, I'm gonna come around like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's secure it right here. Over top of the loop a little, over top of the spiral a little bit. Oh, that's a monstrosity and a half. That's okay. Let's do this. Uh, let's, let's wrap this around. That way we're kind of a, have a little bit on both sides. Let's, let's uh, twist this. Okay, I'm feeling that. I'm gonna bring him up here. Pretend this is like a, a wire wrapped stone and I'm gonna scarf this top right here. And uh, let's, let's tuck, tuck this guy right in there. So you don't have to end it with a spiral. You can end it by tucking it. Now, I like it, but saying to myself, this is cool, this is fancy, and we need more going on up here. So let's take what we have left, um, secure it here, and let's give ourselves a big, gorgeous spiral to end it. I'm trying to think if I should use up, make one more loop first, and then the spiral. You know what? I have my big spiral here. I think I'm going to do loop-de-loops with this. Little cute little loops, just to fill up that space with something more interesting. There we go. I like that. Sloop-de-loops. Turn each one. Make it flat. See? Cute little loop-de-loops. And now I have just enough left to finish the spiral. And I'm going to do a trick here. I'm going to tuck it in first. I'm going to shove it right in there. One last bit of security, and now I'm going to... Oops. So I shoved it right through there, and now I'm going to do my spiral. So fun. This is so fun. So much fun. It should be illegal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What are we going to do? Let's play with this a little bit. I think we're good. I think we're good. 
Even looks cute on the back. Ooh. Now I'm going to show you how the rest came out, but first let's let's do the bead one. Um, whoa! Spool just jumped right off the table. Uh, let's, let's do two and a half feet, happy medium. Um, and this time, like I said. Go from the thin part of the chopstick, but still the middle of the section that you, like say you want to make a bead about two inches or four centimeters. Pick the middle part of that and the middle part of your wire and start wrapping. And this time I'm gonna say, make your coil tight at first because you want that bead to have a nice tight little hole to, um, if you're gonna put a cord through it or, or uh, you know, use it and, whatever else so going around and around and around round and around and around again i'm not i'm not making it crazy tight i'm not like i'm not stressing too much you can always just push it together and you don't need a chopstick for this you can um i'm actually not sure if this is going to slide off very easily it might be hard yeah you know what it's giving me kind of pressure right now hmm not liking that yeah it's this chopstick it has too much of a square shape so it's gripping it too much. I'd say do this with like a coat hanger wire or any kind of like thin, thin dowel or, but metal is more slippery. That might be better. So let's, let's take this off, see if this comes off at all. Wow, that's on there, good. Okay, learn from me. Don't use a chopstick for this bead. Oh, I got it off. Okay, I'm, I'm putting it back. I'm putting it on this bead reamer now. We're gonna continue on the bead reamer. Okay, now don't use a, re a regular bead reamer that has the sanded part. Don't use that. It's gonna scratch up your wire. But this one, I don't know why I happen to come across one. It's super smooth. So, this will work. Don't stab yourself. I just did already. Yeah, you can really push the coils together here. Ouch. Be careful. All right. I'm happy with that size. It's uh, about one and a half inches or three centimeters. And uh, so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a spiral in the middle. I think because this is a bead, I'm going to be a little less crazy than I was with the hairpin because, you know, beads can take more beading depending on where they are, if they're on a wrist, if they're on a necklace. The hairpin, the end of the hairpin is way up in the air. So if it's sticking out of someone's hair, it's probably not going to get like a lot of things attacking it. Whereas a necklace or bracelet, you know, you're using your wrists all day, you're hugging people with the necklace. That's why you don't want loose stuff all over the place. It just gets snagged and pushed out of place. All right, here's my uh, swirl. And now I'm just gonna go crazy and have fun. Let's wrap it this way. That's kind of neat. Let's do it on this side too. Whoop. So I, I put a thicker wrap around there, kind of a diagonal wrap. Oh man, I keep stabbing myself. I would say use a, a coat hanger wire, that's probably safer. If you're accident prone, maybe file the edges first. Let's see, oh yeah, that's gonna slide right off. So I'm gonna be happy with this. Um, let's come back around here. What can we do this time? You know, let's make another little swirl. It's just, this is fun. Swirls look good anywhere and everywhere. This time I'm gonna keep the ends together. All right, sorry, sorry, I was just caught in my head. I didn't realize I wasn't on camera. See that? Now I'm just gonna keep these ends together. I'm gonna to wrap them around this side. I'm gonna do a loop-de-loop. -loop. That's fun. We're gonna do another loop-de-loop. -loop. My loop-de-loops are coming all undone, but that's cool, because this is just craziness and fun. All right. Come back up here. Now this I do want to make a little tighter, this bead, as I was saying. So how am I going to end it? I don't even know. I think I'm going to go, 
think I'm gonna make a tight little swirl and then I can just shove it in somewhere. Grab this end, start my swirl. Ouch. Okay, swirl. Here's my swirl. It's loose, see? Right there, loose. So we're gonna tuck it right in here under this loop-de-loop -loop that makes it secure. Now this one, same thing, let's swirl it. Okay, I thought the camera was recording and I wasn't sure, so I'm just gonna show you again. This, look at that, cute little hole. It's like two millimeters thick. You can put a, a le average leather cord through there. You put a stretch cord, it could be a bracelet, it could be an, an earring just hanging like that. Let's make a few of them, put them on a necklace.